Hey there, everybody. It's Bangles. I just wanted to say one thing. Thank you. Seriously, thank you, everyone. I really do appreciate you supporting the electricity videos I put up. The, um, the two that were tutorials, how to build the trap bases, and the one where I showed me testing out my pressure pad trap base on people in a server. I really do appreciate it. You know, I really didn't know how it was going to go. I was making something just to see how it would play out, and it seemed that it was great, and it really did inspire me to make this, so I'm pretty excited to share this design with y'all. All of this was recorded on my server. If you're curious, I'm playing. It is Bagel's Paradise, currently a solo duo trio. So if you're looking for a friendly server to get started with the game and learn with a severely low pop, feel free to check us out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell to join us with a live stream sometime. We also have a Discord if you want to keep updated with the channel. Enough of that, let's get to the base build. Instead of me talking, I'm just going to list everything that's required for the base design. We'll fast build through the majority of this, and I'll make sure I pause to explain things when it actually warrants an explanation. First, pick your location. For me, I always like building on the beach. It's more beautiful. Or if you want to build this in the middle of the server where you get a lot more traffic, more than welcome. Feel free, go for it. The layout of the design is a 3x3 three three with square foundations and two hexagons and triangles filling in the middle and just basically building on top of that. Let's go ahead and start putting this down. Not too difficult, as you can see from up here. Note, the first row of foundations on the bottom of the screen will not be built on. That's going to be the open area for your customers to walk. We're going to build on the square part of the foundation of the 3x3 so we can get that ready and then build walls around that. Let's upgrade it to stone. On the left side, you'll have a vending machine facing out with the metal shop front where you can look inside the base. In the middle walkway, when you're going towards the shop front, will be a garage door and a heartbeat sensor. And on the right, you'll have a single door opening in to lure your shoppers into the base so you can eventually trap them. Let's put those items up to get ready for the rest of the walls. If you notice the top of the garage door, the thicker metal bar is facing inside, that is what you need. With the square foundation build done, surround the rest with walls, put floors up, and upgrade everything to stone. Inside the base, we need to put down the tool cupboard, both double doors holding the shotgun traps, and the bait loot in the left corner. The small boxes are strategic for later just to make sure they can't hide in the corners. Next, set up the double doors that will be hiding the shotgun traps. Make sure both open in so you don't give any cover to the people when they're trying to frantically get out. I also recommend at this stage putting up the door controller so you can pair them without anything else getting in the way. Go to the other side of the base and put up two wall frames in the hallway leading to the vending machine. One of them you're going to block off for an electricity room. The other is an open area where you'll leave a garage door open so when people come in they'll eventually see some more loot to kind of give them incentive to come inside. You don't have to place them perfectly, you can have them sloppy, poking out a little bit. I also recommend using boxes with skins that are relatively bright to catch their attention. The next part's up to your discretion. You can use double doors or garage doors for this. Personally, I would use garage doors because once you get a couple people, they're going to be pretty mad and they might try to raid you offline. So if they try to go through the doors, I recommend using garage to make it more difficult or you can upgrade the back to sheet metal and use double doors, whatever you want. We're using garage doors for this design. So starting from this foundation all the way back, put up garage doors or double doors, whatever your preference. And if you'd like, you can do the half wall trick and make an extra loot room for storage. And on this triangle, put a garage door on the bottom. This will be how you get in and out of the control area when you are interacting with your prisoner during the trap. Next, in the rooms behind the double doors, put down four shotgun traps each.
it is recommended on this door to do the half wall trick to put up a triangle floor, upgrade it to stone, and demolish the twig. This way you can put one shotgun trap up hanging upside down and three on the bottom. With the traps you want to make sure they're angled in such a way so if they're trying to jump around panic it'll hit them and they don't really stand a chance so if you notice on the two on the right I have pointed towards the boxes and if they move over to the left they're pretty much done and then they have shotgun traps pointing at them everywhere so there we go. Now we're ready to set up the electricity room behind the vending machine. With this you're going to take the root combiner and two electrical branches and place them anywhere on the wall. Go to the roof and put down the solar panels to where you feel the best path of the sun will be. Easiest way is just to put them on opposite corners on the square roof. Once placed, connect both of these to the root combiner, connect the root combiner to the electrical branch, and meet me at the front so we can put down the heartbeat sensor. Now that we're here, place the heartbeat sensor on the square floor above, connecting to the garage door. This part is important because if you place it too far to the left or too far to the right, the door behind you isn't going to close properly and it can pretty much scare off anybody that comes up and tries to go in and the door closes and they immediately know it's a trap. How you avoid this is go to the top of the garage door and you notice how it kind of goes into the metal bar there. You want to stick it there as far as you can approximately there and in the center. Before powering this, go to the single sheet metal door, take the door controller Put it on the top left of the door and pair it. <sighs> now we're ready to connect the heartbeat sensor. Go to your electricity room on the first electrical branch on the branch out, connect it to the input. Then connect the output to the door controller of the sheet metal door you just put up. In case you're wondering what that sound was, that is the heartbeat sensor picking you up as a new player that's walked through the area. Don't worry, it's nothing crazy, say like a random explosion as you're walking by. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck was that, dude? <laughs> what are you doing? What the hell? Did you throw a satchel? <gasps> no! Dude, the helicopters exploded! <laughs> A few important things to note about this is when you set up the heartbeat sensor, it defaults to pick up anybody that walks by. This can be good and bad, but just remember, if you walk up and walk away from the heartbeat sensor, it can open and close the door as you're triggering it and, you know, no longer triggering it. This could scare off the shoppers and unfortunately you lose out on the loot they just bought from you and whatever else they came with. To configure this properly for other bases, all you have to do is have it connected, so have the power input and have the output connected to whatever item you want. Take the hammer, go up to it, hold E, and decide what you want it to be set up for. Where it says exclude authorized, this means if you click on it, anybody who has authorization to the tool cupboard will not trigger the trap, which is what we're actually going to pick for this one. Notice the door closed and it made another clicking sound because I'm no longer able to trigger the trap. Only the people that don't have tool cupboard access will be the ones that will trigger the door. There's only one more room we have to build and the trap base is done. I left the foundation open unfinished on purpose. This foundation is where you're going to be standing whether you are exposed to the player where they can actually harm you, or if you're hiding behind a shop front and they can't harm you, you're going to be there witnessing everything go down. There are two ways you can set this up. The first option, which is actually what we're going to base the design off of, is the half wall trick where you put two half walls, knock out the bottom, put a low wall, and you'll have a pressure pad, X or switch, and a regular switch, like so. The second option is having a shop front with just a single switch and a pressure pad. The two setups are relatively the same. You have the end goal. The doors will eventually open and kill the person that's inside, but they have their minor differences. Going with the shop front, yes, you do have the switch that will open up both double doors at the same time, but you don't really have that true interaction that, you know, you don't really have that level of danger where they can actually hurt you. You're standing behind something looking at them and they know they're going to die eventually. If you don't like farming components, especially electricity components, this would work for you. But if you do farm a lot and you find a bunch of random electrical components and not really sure what to do with them, you know, the other design is more preferred because that way you can interact with the player and make them think they won when they kill you, when in reality, you're going to get their loot. This is really the magic of the trap. The way that it works is you have the pressure pad and the switch going into the XOR switch, both of them powered on. 
the switch will always be turned on and you'll always be standing on the pressure pad. Differing from the OR switch, if you have two active power sources going into the XOR, it will not work. This allows you to stand on the pressure pad, have the switch on, and talk to the trapped person in your base, forcing them to kill you, which will release the power on the pressure pad, because your body will basically fall on the floor, of which will open both double doors and kill the person inside. All you have to do to set it up is go back to the electricity room, go to the last electrical branch, connect the branch out to your pressure pad, connect the power out to your switch, and connect both of those to the OR switch. Once connected, put down your third electrical branch, then connect the output of your OR switch to the electrical branch, then connect your electrical branch to the door controllers right next to each double door. Then test it out and see if it works. With the power out, the switch will work just fine. But you'll notice on the pressure pad, when you have it set to default, nothing works. You have to go back to the electrical branch in your back room and change your branch out to 5. You can set it to 5 if you want this to be functional to open and close doors. If you're just going to use this as a means of opening the doors after you die, you can just leave it at 2 because you'll always have the switch on. This is where your main power is going to be, but it's whatever your preference. To complete the inside of the base, to make it look like you actually live here, put a bag down close to the door, name it something like, I don't know, water base, and put a campfire down because, you know, it's a campfire. And there you have it guys, a fully functional shop only open during regular business hours during the day without a battery. You know, it's not like there's any great shops out there anyway that are open up later that, you know, people come by all the time. It don't take many days that taco bag. Wake up your mouth, no. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot about that. Two optional things you can do. At the front, you can put a staircase going up, make it wood, to complete the RP. And this is something that I always like to do whenever I'm building a base. Put up a nice sign, and then you want to put some nice warm colors up there. Yeah, nice and relaxing, nice and cool. Where the people are just kind of walking up and they're like, Hey, looks like a nice little, nice little shop over there, nice little buddy. They're feeling happy feeling positive, and they're ready to buy your merchandise. Here you can use a little, little, little saturated welcome sign. Probably a little too much, but that's okay. And then to complete it off, you just pick a nice light brown, try a little smiley face, and the smiley face is happy that you're visiting the shop. The next question is, will this actually work? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. I tested it out on a couple of friends. Let's see how they did. And away we go! We're going to test this out on one of my friends, Vani. Not really sure if it's going to work out, so, uh, hello. Hello? I don't know, I've, I've never built, like, a boat base before, and I want to build something, like, I, I just, I'm kind of running into a wall. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, re, you know? Yeah, I'm loading in. Uh, I'm here. Ah! Are you on, like, um, invisible mode or something? No. Oh, hey. Eh. Here, let me try it again. No, it's... I, I can't let you out. I'm sorry. Oh, am I trapped? If you want to let me out, you have to look in the box for freedom. <laughs> you know what to do. Okay. okay. Oh my god! <laughs> it scared me. <laughs> Florin! Hey! What's up, Ma? What's up, Ma? Good, good. Yeah, so. Okay, I can, I can come in? Yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now you're trapped. There's only one way to get out, though. <laughs> You should check that box behind you. Yeah, that's me, yeah. 
You know what you must do. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. That's the only way. You must pay for your sins, my son. Ah, oh, fuck, I missed. Please, Billy, do it! No! Yes. Stop it. Everybody jump. <laughs> uh. Is that your friend? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give mute. Hello, comrade. Welcome to humble abode. Yes, yes. It's very nice. I'm good, you. I'm good, brother. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? When all the brogans come for you? <sighs> hey. Bosses. So how's it going, man? Not too bad. My mic's a little delayed, so excuse me for that. <laughs> now you're good, man. So uh, just look around. Uh, this is where you'll be staying for a little bit. Oh, there's wires on the wall. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it actually adds the core, you know. I'm sure it does. There's only one way out of here. What other little goodies are hiding in here? I don't know, check that box behind you. I'm guessing that's death. <laughs> I don't you think you know what to do. Goodbye, Billy! As you wish. <laughs> it's like, as you wish. Did he leave? No. He said... He said lava ass on that was a trap, you sneaky little... <laughs> Thanks again for watching the video. Greatly appreciate the support. Maybe we'll catch you next time in a live stream or another base building video. Until then... Have a good one, Paylor.